Here's your weather briefing video for this Saturday. It's the 16th day. Is that right? No, it's the 17th day of June. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray. I'm off by a day there uh, because I'm not usually here on Saturday. It's been a long time since I got to do a Saturday video. Scott's going to do Sunday for me, and uh, I'll be sitting in with you this morning. Boy, another stormy night uh, across west central Alabama uh, again. Uh, after several stormy days have affected uh, the deep south and uh, parts of the southern plains. Tragic night, Thursday night, with a tornado at Perryton, Texas, that was very devastating and deadly. Lots of big hail there, lots of big hail across Mississippi, uh, into Alabama, and more wind damage again tonight in Alabama uh, on, this, on Friday night. I'm recording this just after midnight uh, on Saturday morning. Uh, the pattern across North America... Um, is quite interesting. Uh, big trough in the east still, trough in the Rockies and the uh, exiting into the southern plains with high pressure surrounding all of that. Uh, this anomaly, though, as we go through time, uh, really kind of just sticks with Alabama in the southeast. It cut off low there uh, on the latest run of the GFS. This is uh, next Friday. You see that hanging around. And uh, that's going to keep us wet and stormy for the period. We see even deeper trough moving through there around the 29th. And um, finally, maybe things will begin to warm up. And it looks like a big warm up there uh, as we come toward uh, the 4th of July. Now, one of the really unusual things um, has been this uh, subtropical jet across the southern United States. Very powerful. Uh, produced uh, tornadoes southeast Alabama, southwest Georgia on Thursday. Uh, had 130 knot um, jet max over southeast Alabama. You just don't see that uh, in June. Uh, we see that pattern kind of weakens a bit. That upper low sort of drops into uh, Alabama and the southeastern United States. But maybe this will help us uh, get rid of some of this severe weather that we're dealing with. There's a deep trough coming into the uh, eastern United States, uh, kind of as we said uh, there. Uh, one of the most interesting things to me is the rainfall Thursday night, early Friday morning. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, Warrington down in Pensacola picked up 15.23 inches of rain, and uh, not to be outdone, Gulf Breeze picked up 14.08 inches of rain. The uh, rainfall that fell at the Pensacola airport um, was interesting um, because it was a little over nine inches, broke a record for the day uh, for the 15th, and um, the Weather Service in Mobile says that the return period on a rainfall that great in a six-hour period, which occurred between 7 p.m. and 1 a.m. Uh, Thursday night and early Friday, would be about 50 to 100 years. So uh, a very uh, a very unusual, anomalous, uh, and very interesting pattern. Now, a big part of the problem is precipitable water. Uh, this is the amount of atmosphere that's in the uh, an atmospheric column above any place uh, along the surface, and we see that those precipitable water values are uh, pushing two inches there uh, still this morning, a deep plume of moisture over Alabama. That kind of dries out a little bit um, on Sunday, but it doesn't last very long. That moisture is back in here uh, by early Monday morning. And uh, as you see, we don't really get rid of it. As a matter of fact, we get some even uh, more moist air uh, pushing two and a quarter, two and a half inches. That's getting near record territory. Thursday and Friday could be really, really wet. We could see some very heavy rainfall. And as you can see, that kind of continues into Friday night. Dries out a little bit on Saturday, just relatively. and um, But then Sunday, uh, we still got more of that. We don't really dry out. Uh, we don't really dry out through the whole two-week period, but maybe there by um, the beginning of the uh, 4th of July weekend, uh, maybe things will be getting uh, a little bit better. Now, a little bit of disagreement among the... Um, the mesoscale models about what's going to happen today. Uh, this is uh, coming off the NAM three kilometer, which you don't talk about a lot, but it was pretty accurate with the storms on uh, Friday night. Um, we see some showers and storms there, uh, still pushing their way out of southwest Alabama. And if the NAM is right, most of the day over north and central Alabama is dry. Uh, really. 
almost nothing uh, north of Montgomery, just a few isolated showers. See some pretty decent showers and thunderstorms dropping uh, there toward the Gulf Coast. And uh, that indeed uh, would be the case. Uh, the SPC uh, thinks that we'll have for today, for your Saturday, uh, a marginal risk over about the, uh, the southwestern half of Alabama. Uh, there from about Sumter County down to Montgomery, uh, over to Eufaula, uh, a slight risk, the level, you know, two out of five kind of standard risk uh, for South Alabama as those storms get going later in the day uh, into the Florida panhandle. So we'll be uh, watching that very carefully to see if we get any more severe weather. But I think we kind of uh, perhaps get through it. Now, taking it on out through time, uh, going into Sunday, uh, we do see a weakening uh, area of showers, storms moving into Alabama during the afternoon. Most of the day, again, dry. Most of the evening is dry. But look at here, a, a bigger batch, stronger batch, uh, moving into West Alabama. And it looks like it could hold together into the Birmingham area by 2, 3 o'clock uh, early Monday morning. So that'll be, that'll be something to watch. But the interesting thing is that our uh, friendly uh, HRRR model looks uh, considerably different. It shows um, a decent batch of showers and storms uh, forming across uh, the northern half of Alabama uh, by mid-afternoon, uh, dropping southward again, intensifying as they go, and maybe not as strong as we've seen uh, the last couple of days. Uh, but we go through most of the evening hours Saturday night into Sunday, and here's early Sunday morning, a system diving into southwestern Alabama, and uh, maybe uh, a second system diving in there by late afternoon, and uh, perhaps um, uh, a bigger system coming uh, late Sunday night into early Monday morning. I think that's what I've said in the forecast, stronger batch storms arriving Sunday night. So, you know, that is kind of what we uh, expect. Now, it's going to be warm. Uh, we're starting off in the 60s this morning. We'll be in the uh, upper 80s, uh, middle to upper 80s uh, across the area, 87 to 88 degrees today. Again, pretty much more of the same of that tonight. Now, uh, our Sunday, uh, we'll be in the 60s overnight, though. Um, you can see those Cape values, uh, you know, start moving on up there. Some of those storms have some pretty decent Cape to work with, not as much as they've had, but as they get into South Alabama, um, they really could. Uh, pose some problems and uh, again on Sunday uh, you know that's something that we that we kind of expect now also I'll show you uh, what the day three severe which is I record this will actually be getting uh, a new day two but you can see it shows a fairly extensive slight risk area there from Arkansas northeastern Louisiana into good bit of Mississippi and the western portion of Alabama so we'll be watching that of course uh, very, very carefully, making sure we don't uh, have a lot more severe weather. Now, this temperature anomaly off of the uh, GFS shows cool temperatures, uh, slightly cooler than normal, uh, through most of the period, as you see. We pushed some 20 degrees below normal by, by Thursday morning, if the GFS is right, uh, or really that would be, that would be Thursday evening. Uh, this would be early Friday morning, some 7 degrees below normal. We're going to see some temperatures lower middle 60s at midweek as some of that drier air kind of works in here. But you see, we really don't break this trend of uh, cool temperatures all the way through the two-week period. So if that's true, it's going to be uh, a relatively interesting period for us. Now, using the GFS as our model uh, of record to uh, kind of tell us what's going to happen, this is uh, precipitation going through the day-to-day. Showers and thunderstorms break out. Uh, strongest there over southeast Alabama, southwest Georgia. Um, and then we go calm tonight. More showers and storms moving in. We saw that. That's fairly typical with, um, uh, with the model runs we saw. Um, another batch diving towards southwest Alabama there on Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. Uh, another batch uh, forming and moving into our area on Monday. That looks pretty wet. Looks like we might get a little low pressure system forming along the northern Gulf Coast. We've talked about that for a couple of weeks. So it might end up there. It doesn't look like it's got any tropical development associated with it. More showers and storms on Wednesday. Uh, maybe a, a, a little less than we've been seeing Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday may be a little drier. Uh, we get into Friday. Uh, it does look wet. 
And then Saturday looks a little drier, but Sunday turns back uh, to the wet. As we go through time, uh, we stay in a fairly, uh, fairly wet pattern until looks like really around Friday the 30th when that pattern begins to break. High pressure uh, begins to take control of the weather over the eastern United States. And uh, that could mean some uh, really nice warm and, uh, and uh, fairly beautiful weather uh for fourth of july now total qpf from the weather prediction center shows that uh, we'll be you know getting rainfall amounts across general areas uh, of alabama north and central alabama all through the period as we go toward the end of the week some of those areas in east central alabama um you know even um you know well i guess i'm looking at the gfs here uh, not looking at the weather prediction center model but uh, as you can see, as we get on out there toward the end of the period, some of those rainfall amounts are pretty good, two-week totals. Uh, really, four and a half to six inches with some nine and ten-inch amounts possible there in uh, south Alabama. That will, um, of course, be very interesting to watch. Now, we do have something else interesting to watch, and that is uh, the potential for a tropical depression to form in the eastern Atlantic. And folks, I can't tell you how unusual this is to have a potential tropical cyclone uh, in the main development region of the Atlantic. And the Hurricane Center puts a high probability that this is going to happen. And it could happen as early uh, as this weekend. But I'll take you through time. The low track steadily to the west here. Uh, there it is Tuesday morning early beginning to strengthen. I uh, got a central pressure of about 989 millibars. It's probably becoming a tropical storm by then. And it would be called Brett. Um, it continues to push to the west-northwest. Slows just a bit. You see that uh, Azores High sort of shifting to the east a little bit and uh, leaving an opening here for a potentially stronger tropical cyclone, probably approaching hurricane strength by the time it uh, edges past the Antilles. Um, and uh, we see some central pressures there in the 957 millibar range. This could be a 100, 110 mile per hour hurricane at that point. The stronger it is, it is probably more likely to take a more northerly and northeasterly recurving path away from the United States. We'll take that, but we still see some signs that if it's weaker, it could make a feint toward the Bahamas and perhaps the southeastern United States. That's not a forecast. Looks like we won't get it in the Gulf, but uh, we might be watching it off the southeast coast of the United States, Georgia, and South Carolina uh, for a few days. Um, so that covers a lot. A lot of severe weather, a lot of heavy rain, talked about a lot of hail. We've got a potential tropical cyclone, maybe a hurricane coming. Um, it's going to be an interesting two weeks uh, here and probably a very interesting summer. Well, we've recorded the Weather Brain show for Monday night. We recorded it Thursday. James will be on vacation next week. Randy Cerveni, uh, a world expert on extreme weather and uh, a member of some important committees of the World Meteorological Organization, uh, especially in verifying uh, really interesting weather records around the globe. Randy joined us, and we had a great conversation. You'll really love listening to it. It'll be uh, wherever you get your normal uh, podcast sources from by late Monday evening. Of course, you can probably already go back and watch it on the YouTube channel if you just can't wait till Monday night. We can't wait to be back on the 26th with our next show. Well, that's your weather video for this Saturday, the uh, 17th. Uh, as I said, I'll um, have notes on the blog, an update on the forecast. Keep it posted through the afternoon. Scott will be back 6 p.m. Uh, later Saturday evening tonight, and uh, he'll have the weather forecast for you Sunday morning and all the updates through the day on Sunday. Well, I probably will not see you again. I may see you next weekend. We're going to be a, a little bit of vacation, but uh, maybe I'll get to do the video from, uh, from the Georgia coast. But if I don't, until I get to see you again in two weeks, as I always tell you, keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at.